Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport for today's Rugby Championship Round 1, Five Things Learned. Uh, this is a very cool uh, video that we do every week and because uh, it's interesting to see what different people take out of, out of matches and uh, who, you know who really noticed something and, and whether people agree with the, the takes that I've taken, what I found. And it's quite cool because a lot of sort of viewers will, 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 and will comment and, and, and they'll provide a whole different perspective of things that maybe I didn't see as well. Um, so this is a very fun video to do, and uh, we, I think there's a lot to learn, and also not lo a, a lot, sorry, not to read into uh, over the first weekend. So it's interesting to know how much we can read into, what we can and what we can't read into, rather. Um, so before we look at exactly what I learned and my five things, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Obviously, it's just my takeaways. I want to know what yours are. Put them in the comments, as I said, and uh, let's share our knowledge and, and what we thought and didn't think of certain aspects. Uh, this weekend. First up, let's have a look at number one. Right, so if we're all being brutally honest, a week ago we looked at the Springbok side and we said it's a good side, it could be beaten. It's not our best side, there are potentially deficiencies, there are potential issues with the team. And, you know, we were all very impressed with the squad Australia brought up from in terms of individual player perspective that I think that we said, you know, a win would be remarkable for the side. Um, regardless of the scoreline, you know, just a win would be really great. So for this team to then go out and get a bonus point win and to absolutely hammer and 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 put it straight away like that does demonstrate the depth. And I think the reason that I think we're so excited about the depth is so many players who, you know, maybe weren't necessarily on the 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 um, high on the spring mark radar, you know, were, were, were really good. You know, I mean, obviously, Kirtley Einstein, for example, has been kind of knocking down the door for a while. For me, Andre Esterhazen hasn't had a, a game like he did this weekend where we really sat there going, shit, maybe he should be playing ahead of Damon Delendi. So that's a really good thing. And should he be playing against Damon Delendi? Well, I mean, that's a debate we can have now. A year ago, I would have said categorically no. Now, I'm probably still saying maybe not, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen and I'm far more willing to have that discussion. Uh, Jean Klein jumps in and has a game where we sit there going, hell, this guy could be going to the World Cup and, and could really deserve it. Uh, a year ago, we were worried about whether Dwayne Vermeulen was was still the, the Thor that we knew. And now we can sit there saying, I, you know, he thinks he is. He can still play at that at this sort of level. Um, you know, Marco Vestard, a lot of people were sort of questioning his inclusion in the squad at all. Now people are sitting there saying, why isn't he starting against the All Blacks? Grant Williams coming off the bench and, and looking as good as he did. Kanan Moody, once again, showing that he's very much ready for this level. So I definitely think that we demonstrated the depth once again because a couple of players who are well, good squad players all of a sudden, I put themselves right in the front lines in terms of starters and potentially World Cup candidates. So the issue we've got, isn't it, is were Australia bad, were South good, is it somewhere in between? I think, and even Eddie Jones, you know, said we were well beaten, we weren't there today. And I think that's very true. I think Australia didn't pitch up. I think they didn't get a lot right, if anything. Um, there were a couple of moments where maybe you could see what they were trying to do. This, at the end of the day, you know, you can you can create a game plan, you can create a pattern, for example, you can run it in training. It's on the middle during a test match where you really start to understand where you are. And I think this Australian side got it wrong uh, or didn't execute effectively. They will get better and I think they'll get better quickly. I think that the Australian side that we'll see, the, the performance we'll see from Australia in the first test of the Rugby World Cup that they have, their first World Cup game, will be chalk and cheese to this test. So they will improve quickly, I think. And I think come World Cup, I think they still will be quite a big force. But this weekend, um, just there wasn't much to write home about. Once again, a reason to be excited about the box. And again, it's, it's interesting to see how people sort of jump on the bandwagon and we're very quick to discard everything previously. The Springbok game plan has progressed. It's taken a step forward. We, we, we've been seeing it try and take a step forward, but um, sometimes it works, sometimes it hasn't worked, sometimes we've falling back on bad habits. Sometimes we fall back on tried and tested methods. But there's no doubt that we are evolving. And I think this weekend was another big step forward. We saw a whole different style of play in terms of, um, you know, the, the way we play, the patterns that we ran, for example. Some of the offloads, I mean, Marvin Ori, for example, making that offload off the ground, his immediate thought was to get to the ball and make an offload. I think four years ago, it would have been secure the ball, restart. So there's just small moments, I think, where, where, where we ha are doing things slightly different. I do think players are getting a bit more licensed to, to express themselves. And I think it's a lot of it is the fact that they, because they've got the, such a close group of players and all the similar sort of players, that once that, that, that was sort of always the plan. Now that you really understand the game plan, you really understand how it works, 
now you can there's, there's a certain amount of trust where you know there's a bit more sort of f- freedom to say right in this situation you can do this you can take that slight risk you know it's not as constructed and, and maybe i wouldn't say restrictive but um you know there was a very set game plan given how little time they had together you know and in, in before the last world cup now we're sort of moving towards that situation because these players have played together for a while there's a bit more freedom and there's a bit more options for them to, to sort of take in a match situation Argentina were out of the game by the 15th minute mark. Very few teams in the world can do that. And the All Blacks traditionally have always been one of them. This weekend, we, they showed why. Um, they were on it this quickly. Literally, they had a bad first two minutes when, when, when David McKenzie, not even two minutes, a bad moment when David McKenzie was charged down. A bit of a deer in headlines, what's going to happen? And after that, they had one opportunity with that, with that, with that early break card and bang, bang, bang. 14 minutes later, Argentina are sitting 17 points like down, you know. Um, it was mental, and they could have been 21 points down. So it shows you that this New Zealand side, which has had a lot of criticism over the last 18 months, have not been the best and most consistent New Zealand side we've seen in the last sort of decade. But give them an inch, they'll take a mile. You know, you cannot give them that inch because there are so many talented attacking players who identify space, who've got the offload, who you know how to, uh, you know, create opportunities and create moments to score that if you give them the opportunity they can still take it so even though they're not maybe performing at their best or their highest level you cannot afford to switch off them because they have that attacking attacking mindset they've got that skill level um and that that lethalness about them where if you do give them opportunities they can take them like that and i was to pay the price so it's a bit of a warning you know that do not underestimate this new zealand side because they very much will um they very much will have a go and and, and they're very much capable of, of hammering you quite quickly. Um, Arsenal were awful. Let's be honest. For, for, for 25 minutes, they were dreadful. They, they, they were missing tackles. They had no attacking structs. They couldn't hold on to the ball. They were being outscrammed. The lineup was, was all right, but that was about it. Um, and the second half, they looked like a different team already. Um, they are a side that takes a while to get going. They're a side of players who play outside the country. They all do in across different leagues. There's very little chemistry, um, club chemistry, for example, when they come into into camp. You know, New Zealand, for example, are a side based on a lot of cheese players, a lot of Crusaders players. Yes, a couple of Blues um, players in there as well as um, Highlanders players and, and Hurricanes and stuff. But um, a lot of these players are playing together at uh, at domestic level and um, know each other very well. The Argentinian side don't have that luxury. So now they're sort of coming back into camp and they come into back camp quite late. So they come into camp and you now sort of almost have to start again every year. So they always traditionally do start slowly. So I don't think that you can look at this Argentinian performance and write them off and say, right, well, Argentina are back to being bad. It's Argentinian side's good. They've got good players. Yes, they're, they're, I think they've got lots of um, issues that they need to sort of sort out. I think no Marcus Kramer is always going to be a massive loss for them. He's, he's for me, he's world-class. Um, and they really missed somebody like him, I think, this weekend. And you don't want to sort of hop on about one specific player, but he is an incredibly important player. Every single time, you know, those two games when, when Arsenal beat New Zealand, you go back and you look at, you know, big performances, and I think he was massive there, especially I think it was last year. He was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that Arsenal side will get a lot better, and they'll get better quickly, much like I think the Australian side. So, again, I don't think we're going to read too much into the All Blacks and the Box performances. I think both of them will be happy with it. I think they both took steps forward. I think they are still... Lots of areas for them to improve in. But I do think a lot of the result came down to Argentina and Australia not being at their best. Argentina definitely improved as the game went on. I mean, look at the second half. They were, they were much, much better. Um, Australia were, were kind of well beaten. and never really sort of managed to get a foothold in the game. But again, I do think both those teams will improve um, pretty quickly. Let me know what you thought. Those are some of my takeaways. I want to know what you think of the, the, of the round and what you sort of took away from it down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.